Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Khan, also known as Jedi Jester, and today we've got another FIFA 21 tutorial video for you. There are some major mistakes that you've been doing which prevent you from reaching the elite level, so we're going to list our top 5 common mistakes and take a look at how to fix them. First off, I want to remind you that all of the FIFA players are human beings and no robots. That means everyone can make mistakes. But what separates the elite players from the gold players is that they learn from their mistakes and they try to correct them. Remember, to be able to improve yourself, you have to accept the fact that you are making mistakes instead of blaming other things all the time. Once you see the obvious mistakes you make and admit them to yourself, then you start the process of recovering from them. In this video, we are going to give you our top 5 list, but there could be other things that you are doing wrong, so try to analyze yourself and get rid of your bad habits. It is not a shame that you are doing mistakes, but not learning from them and doing the same ones all over again is the worst thing which can happen to you in FIFA. Before we get started, I'd like to talk about our individual coaching services provided by Bpart Gaming. If you're interested in getting better at FIFA, our individual one-to-one -one coaching might be the right thing for you. Our pro, top 100 and elite coaches will help you understand the basics and advanced techniques of FIFA while analyzing your gameplay to be able to take you to the next levels in short notice. There are four different tiers, just to make sure you can start off with the coaching on the desired level. To get more information, you can visit our coaching website. The link is down in the description below. Overcommitting and trying to guess where the attacker will make his move is, for me, one of the most common and dangerous mistakes, especially when playing against a patient opponent. In most of the one-on-one -on -one situations against the attacker, your goal should be just to stay in front of him, between the attacker and the goal. Letting him do the first move is the smart thing here, because you can't get the ball from the attacker unless he pushes the ball out of his feet. Once you decide to take an early action, let's say trying to guess the direction that the attacker would go, you might guess right and take advantage of being early. But what if you're wrong? Gambling into one direction like this automatically opens up the other possibilities for the attacker and if he is patient enough, he will see your commitment and use it for his own good. Let's see that with an example. After some build-up passes, I passed the ball inside to my striker. My opponent was very successful at switching to the right defender beforehand just to make sure I can't get more dangerous towards the goal but what he did afterwards made the goal quite possible. My player is facing the lower left side of the pitch, so the only thing that my opponent needs to do is to stay on the line we've talked about before to be able to reduce my chances. If I try to take a shot while he stands in front of me, it will most probably get blocked, and if I push the ball away into another direction, he can easily contest it. But he decides to take his player towards the other side, probably thinking I would make a quick turn into that direction. So he overcommitted to that thought and gambled. After that, he was able to switch to his other defender, who was again really in a good spot to cover that important line. At this time, the defender would have blocked anything I'd do if he just stood in front of me. But then he tried to overcommit to the tackle, as if I only had the option to go towards the lower side and I dragged the ball back. This was his second overcommitment in the same position. The negative effect of the first commitment is the gap you can clearly see inside the box, which gives my striker the space to score after his second commitment. So overcommitting in the tackles and gambling beforehand is really dangerous and this is all caused by the defender himself. In the second position, the defender made a mistake off the ball by again gambling and overcommitting. To be able to cut the direct passing lane, the defender left his spot which allowed the through ball to work here. My opponent should have either stood where you were and act after observing where the pass goes or if he wanted to cut the passing lane so badly, he shouldn't have brought his defender that far out. Passing is the key to your build-up. If you somehow rush it, you'll find yourself defending all the time. Passing the ball around without noticing where the opposition defensive players settle is just going to fail. For me, there are two major mistakes that I see during the matches that players need to recover from. First, the idea of passing the ball forward all the time is unfortunately wrong. Yes, the main target is a score and at some point you should play the ball forward, but sometimes you need to see that you get stuck in a certain area and you need to reset your build-up, which is only possible by passing the ball back. This mostly happens while you try to get out of your own half under pressure. Remember, there are many passing directions on the pitch and it's super easy to pass the ball back or change sides and there is nothing wrong with it. After winning possession, my opponent tries to get out of pressure. He successfully switches sides, but then he makes a poor decision. Just because he wants to get out of his own half as quickly as possible, he sends a careless lifted ball towards his midfielder, who is covered by my striker. He 
he wasn't under a certain pressure before passing the ball, so he had some time to observe and see his players' movements around the pitch. The only pass that makes sense will be towards the right wing again, because all other players are under pressure. He probably didn't take a clear look and this is why he sent the ball into the fire zone. Even if he was facing pressure, he could have passed the ball back to the keeper and then towards the right wing. Instead, he lost the ball and conceded the goal. This is very annoying and coming back mentally from these kinds of goals is quite hard. So make sure to check the field and don't be afraid to pass the ball back. The second major problem I see is that the players are too being locked on on a single passing angle. To be able to pass the ball to a certain player, sometimes you need to take extra steps or let's say extra passes. That means passing the ball first to a player who has a better angle or opportunity than the original passer towards the intended receiver. As an example, we watch the opposition going on a counter-attack. The striker is running towards the goal but the player who has the ball doesn't have a certain angle to pass and his passing lane is also covered by my defender. In this case, he either needs to maintain a better angle to pass or deliver the ball to the support player who makes his run back from the wing and has a better angle to pass to the striker once he completes his run. Instead, the pass fails and a promising opportunity goes to garbage. If you are more into passing, I strongly recommend checking out our top 5 passing tips on our channel. You can watch that tutorial by clicking the link down in the description. While defending, player switching is a really key factor. Both L1 and right analog switches could be useful to select the player you want, you just need to find the perfect balance. But most of the time, I see players who panic a lot when the opposition gets the ball to their box. Some of them are unsure if they can switch to the right guy and spam the switch button multiple times even though they got the right player to defend with, which then also gets switched or they are totally hesitant of switching at all because of the fear of failing. There are two things I could tell at this point. If you hesitate and don't switch, you concede. If you panic and switch 4 times in 2 seconds, you can find the right guy and you concede. Stay composed, know which player you have selected, know which player you want to switch to and press the right analog stick accordingly. And no matter how hard the game is, stand your ground. Sliding in just like that because you panic isn't going to make things better. You can always practice player switching first against the AI in squad battles and then once your muscle memory gets better on that, you can try to practice those against the real players in rivals before playing foot champions. Player switching is all about composure, confidence and the right muscle memory, so practice and trusting yourself makes it perfect. Excessive use of the sprint button is a mistake which causes problems on both sides of the pitch. So, it's better to know when to let go of your sprint button in certain situations. If you sprint too much while dribbling the ball, you lose your control over it, the opposition defender can catch you and recover the ball from you. Surely, in wide spaces you can run as much as you want, but if you're in a tight position, surrounded by the defenders, you need to let your sprint button go. And of course, if you want to change the direction of the ball, you need to slow down, because while sprinting, you push the ball consistently away from your feet, which makes sharp turns a lot harder. On the other hand of the pitch, running too much causes problems in the defense as well. Once you run too much, you can lose the control of the defender and give away unnecessary positions, just like I did in this one. You can use a sprint button to catch the attackers, but once you find yourself in the right position near the attacker, you should force yourself to let go of the sprint button. Otherwise, it is very likely that you move your defender too much and give away an unwanted opportunity. Everyone has a different game style and a different pattern while building up. It is really okay to have strong techniques that you use frequently, but using only the same thing in your offense makes you predictable, and it will be harder for you to attack. Because you're playing against real players, and most of the players can adapt your game style and attacking patterns, which will cause problems to you throughout the game if you don't have a versatile game style. So the solution to that is to have a plan B, and even a plan C. Once you have the feeling that the opponent is adapting to your techniques and patterns, you can try to use different ones to confuse him so the next time he expects your favorite attacking pattern, he will be denied. Same goes for the formation as well. If you're playing a center base formation like 4 one 2 one 2 narrow then obviously you use the center a lot, the opponent adapts to it and maybe also switches to more center base defending formation which will allow you to switch to a wing base formation such as 4 4 2 to counter him. Having multiple plans allows you to do different things and the ability to analyze your opponent which triggers your decision making makes you more unpredictable and lets you stay one or two steps ahead of your opponent.
So that's it for today's guide. I hope this video encourages and enlightens you in the path of finding your own mistakes and fixing them as soon as possible. Anything is possible in FIFA, so make sure you force yourself just a bit into that direction. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, peace.